What's going on there guys? Good evening, it's the Earthmaster here on this Tuesday, October 4th, 2022. It is about 7.08 p.m. West Coast time here in California. The latest quake shows a, uh, looks like a 4.4 earthquake on the globe. In the area, where'd it go here? We kind of in this blend of activity down in South America, quite a bit of movement hiding that most recent earthquake of 4.4. A lot of earthquakes popping up there in South America. Also some movement along the uh, Middle America Trench as well throughout the afternoon time frame. Let's go ahead and check out the activity that is listed up here on the map. There we go. Uh, this is a 2.5 map and above. We did have some activity up around Stanley, Idaho earlier. Uh, today it looks like right off of the uh, Sawtooth Fault system. It's been relatively quiet in that area for a while. Let's bring up the all magnitudes there. Not a whole lot of um, movement currently in the Idaho area. Uh, Yellowstone National Park had some small quakes there earlier today. And some activity generally light and microquake uh, around the Mount Hood area and also into Washington. As far as any newer activity along the uh, west coast, eh, we got a few earthquakes there along the uh, creeping section of the San Andreas Fault that uh, has seen a little bit of activity kind of ramping up throughout the afternoon time frame. Nothing big, just a couple small microquakes all below 2.0. And that's this section right here. Uh, getting a little cluster though up here around the uh, Makama Fault and the Bartlett Springs Fault system. This here is just west of me in the coast range north of Yakaya. A um, little bit of increasing activity there. Might want to watch out for some possible further movement. Uh, Southern California, we got one earthquake here on the San Jacinto Fault Zone outside of Borrego Springs, California. 1.3 at uh, about 12 kilometers or so. A couple earthquakes also just off the Imperial Fault, the plate boundary down south here of the Mexicali area. That uh, looks like a little bit of earthquake activity. 3.6 and the 2.1. See what else we got uh, into Nevada as well, north of uh, ne Las Vegas. It looks like a couple ones kicking up here out in the desert. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oklahoma, Texas, all very minimal. Uh, not not a whole lot of new activity out here around Puerto Rico e either. <clears throat> Uh, the Peru area, or Argentina, I should say, South America region, 4.4 just coming into the area. Uh, we've been watching this region kind of swarm a little bit down there into the Peru Chile Trench, somewhat deeper earthquakes into this area. We haven't seen any further adjustment upstream along the locked area or the uh, subduction zone itself, but uh, might be something to watch here. A lot of times when we see this deeper movement quakes into the subduction zone, we watch much more larger, shallower earthquakes forming towards the surface. So just a heads up in the South America region. Uh, most of the activity on the big island tonight confined to the Pahala area. Looks like that swarm up here around Mono Loa is calming down. Alaska, uh, I've been seeing a little bit of swarming out there up into the uh, Denali area north of Anchorage. Quite a bit of movement also around the Cook Inlet area getting a swarm of uh, activity, but it's all microquakes for now. Western Pacific, a little spotty as we uh, head westward here. Not a whole lot going on through the Kermadec Trench or the Fiji Islands area. We did have a 4.2. This one coming in looks like earlier this morning time frame there at uh, about 577 kilometers deep in that area. 5.6 in Iran just a couple hours ago. Actually, uh, I think it's been about an hour and a half, two hours or so. We've seen an earthquake strike that area. Notice everything is in the yellow and orange. Um, looks like it was about 15 kilometers deep. It was felt broadly throughout the area. Uh, this region is in a, uh, kind of looks like it's in a populated area. They do have esti uh, estimated fatalities and whatnot into the orange. Far as the uh, potential loss of life at 35%. Estimated economic losses there between 38 and 45 percent, it looks like. Um, so, must be a um, pretty sensitive area out there. 5.6, though, can definitely do some damage if it's in the right spot. 
Uh, let's see. Let's check out Yellowstone National Park here. See if we've got any earthquakes popping off. There is the earthquake over around Stanley, Idaho. Notice that showing up on the uh, Yellowstone seismograph stations here. Mostly uh, around the western portion, but uh, further west, of course, in, in Idaho. It, it, will much, it will pick up much stronger. But far as localized activity goes, earthquake activity, just a couple throughout the afternoon and early evening time frame. Uh, this all could change again tonight. Seems like these swarms come and go. We'll watch that as we uh, head into the overnight time frame. Nothing showing up again on the tremor map. This is day number two of no activity. I kind of find that hard to believe. 10-3. Um, this was yesterday's. Uh, looks like we had about 574 epicenters of tremor. And uh, that's on a good section of the Cascadia. Basically from the south here, almost all the way up along the entire length of the Cascadia. Uh, again, this is tremor down dip. But uh, that's a pretty good uh, amount of numbers there. It looks as though these guys may be issuing their data later in the evening because last night when I did this update, uh, it had shown zero. So I'll have to wait. Uh, looks like maybe after, I'm thinking maybe later around 8 or 9 is when I'll check it and see if we got trimmer for tonight or throughout the last 24 hours that is. Uh, let's see, solar weather activity, still the hot topic right now in the uh, space weather department. We are getting a flare kicking up here currently into the upper C flare category. It looks like a C5.6, the maximum um, X-ray flux there. Uh, we did have an M flare earlier today, kind of a low grade one. Still watching the potential here, folks, for an X flare. It still remains at about 30% chance. Proton events up there as well, around 35. M flare at 70, and uh, almost a certainty there. I'm seeing a C flare at 99% chance. Um, and the sunspots are facing Earth. This one here is rotating into view, getting ready to uh, possibly put on a show for us. Uh, the sunspots really haven't changed too much since this morning's update, but uh, still pretty large. This is the one right here, 3112, I believe is the name, right? 3112. Got a little companion up here to the north. 3116 wants to join in on the Sunspot train. Got some further development around here as well, the eastern side of, of the sun, eastern limb. And um, 3115, not a huge threat. This one right here, though, definitely something to watch here for potential flaring uh, overnight. Looks like that is the source of the sea flare currently. Notice the brightness. Um, they're centered around 3112. So watch it very closely um, tonight and tomorrow and the next couple days actually because this thing is pretty much lined up. If you look right here, um, getting very close to being just earth directed completely. I think by this time tomorrow we should be um, much closer in terms of being in a bullseye shot if this thing were to produce a uh, massive flare and a subsequent CME. So we will keep an eye on that. Right now the forecast calls for a G1 class storm it looks like. Uh, and um, that should be tonight. 50% chance of higher latitude storming. Mid latitudes have a 30% chance there of seeing that uh, aurora borealis up there in the beautiful sky, nighttime sky. Current conditions right now, though, somewhat elevated, about three on the KP index board. There's the current Aurora forecast there, 30 minute interval uh, forecast. So a um, little bit of potential up there on the higher latitudes, it looks like. Looks like uh, there was a pretty nice filament eruption today in the sun's southern hemisphere. The event uh, looks like it produced a CME. Uh, possibly have a weak earthbound component, although much of the plasma was directed south of the sun earth line. So we'll see if this uh, kind of kicks up any um, interesting space weather here in the coming days. Getting pretty active though, folks, on the sun. Looks like these guys are forecasting a possible cannibal CME event.
Alrighty, another look at the sunspots, 3112. The uh, potential major player here and producing uh, an X flare here really soon. So we'll watch that pretty closely, folks. Alrighty, have a good night. I'm going to get out of here and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Maybe watch a little bit of TV here. I don't watch a lot of TV, but me and Missy Mimi sit down and uh, enjoy a little movie once in a while. Uh, don't forget, folks, um, we are giving away a uh, doing another drawing for our members only coming up. It's a new month, a new drawing. Uh, make sure you get into that drawing uh, by becoming a member here on the channel. Those uh, channel members uh, automatically get entered into drawing every month. Also, get a little bit of extra video there, some more personal videos. Not really not earthquake related, but uh, on a family and personal level, I guess you could say. Also, some e extra emojis and icons uh, for those member channel members that uh, wish to be a part here of the channel. And um, I haven't really decided what we're giving away this month. Um, I think we're gonna do an option. Uh, we're gonna give, uh, we're probably gonna bring three things up. Uh, one of them is going to be a, uh, a mining kit. Basically a geology mining kit. Uh, geology mining kit. There we go. <laughs> See if I can spit it out. I don't think I've recovered from the last week or so being out in Texas. It's just minimal sleep, jet lag. Yeah, a whole lot of excitement. Come back to California. It's just, ah, maybe that's it. Coming back here to California. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a geology mining kit, which is pretty cool. That's going to be one option. And then we'll probably throw two more options in there. And one's going to be a gift card. Uh, and then maybe one could be some Earthmaster merchandise. So uh, that could be three potential items that we will give our winner the choice to uh, pick from. I think that's better. Uh, I, I haven't had any complaints far as the products or at least the uh, prizes that we've given away in the past. All has been well. But I think it's cool to have an option, right? You get to do the eeny, meeny, miny, mo and pick one whatever one you want so but we'll go into more details as we dig into the October month a little bit uh, later and by the way my last video uh, that I did I mentioned that it was um, August did I say August uh, 4th I think it was way off <laughs> someone noticed it it took a little while but one person out there noticed it and uh, I'm going to send them some free decals for uh, noticing that mistake I made earlier. But uh, sometimes I do that. 10-4, it's October 4th, not August 4th. I don't want to go back in time. I'm not, I, don't, I don't want 115 degrees again today. So, Alrighty, we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Please have a safe night and uh, keep your eyes open to the sky. I think we have an X-Flare coming in here pretty soon. Take care, folks.